uh, the commercial glucometer, almost all of them uh, run on the amperometry principle. They use the amperometry to measure the amount of glucose. This is the example, right? You have the paper strip. I don't know if you have seen uh, some adult uh, use this before. Uh, so you punch your finger to get the blood, and then you put the blood on the paper strip, and then you insert it in the glucometer, and it gives you the readout of the glucose. Oh, newer version. You may make some tattoo. Your tattoo uh, may collect some sweat or blood by some, some procedure and then give you the number. Oh, this is the more fancier version to put it on your skin. This is kind of the strip. You can take it, you can put it on your arm and then you can take it back when you don't want to use it, something like this. So this is the modern uh, glucometer, but this is the commercialized one, right? The standard one you, that you have seen. Actually, this paper strip uh, is uh, collecting your blood and then it will flow your blood to the Electrode inside the glucometer. So let's see how does it work. Your glucose meter, your glucometer, your glucometer uh, will have uh, your glucometer has the enzyme. That enzyme is called that enzyme is called uh, glucose oxidase. Glucose oxidase. I put the name here. R G O X. What does glucose oxidase do? Because glucose is not electroactive. Glucose is not electroactive. You cannot directly oxidize or reduce it. So you need, you need to convert it to something that can be oxidized or reduced. So that is glucose oxidase. Glucose oxidase will be put on the working electrode. Glucose oxidase is put on the working electrode inside the glucometer. Once you have glucose in your stack, it will convert the glucose oxidase will convert the glucose to gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. The gluconic acid is fine, but hydrogen peroxide is more interesting because hydrogen peroxide can be oxidized if you apply the appropriate constant potential. I have seen some people use my, uh, 0.6 volt or 0.7 volt, so I put here 6 uh, plus 600 millivolt. At this potential, it can oxidize hydrogen peroxide to oxygen gas, and you get the electrons, right? And since this is oxidation, of course, you will collect the anodic current. And if you have more glucose, then you have more hydrogen peroxide. More hydrogen peroxide result to higher current, right? Higher anodic current. Therefore, the current from hydrogen peroxide the current from hydrogen oxidation is proportional to glucose concentration. And by this way, this is how your glucometer works. So you are, the, the factory will cal calibrate by those calibration curve. The, magn the manufacturer or the factory will calibrate your glucometer and get the slope and equation and then store it in the memory. And then once you punch your blood and give the blood to, your, to the glucometer, then it will collect the current and it, it will convert the current to be the amount of glucose, the glucose level in your blood. All right, this is the principle of the glucometer or glucose amperometric biosensor. We use the word, we use the word biosensor because glucose uh, oxidase is basically derived from a biological species. So that's why we have the fancy word biosensor. And again, to zoom in here, some people now i think the modern glucose biosensor use a uh, two working electrode this is a little bit confusing so let's go slowly so this is the thing inside your glucometer inside of that you get something like this so you put your blood here and then it will have some kind of flow flow uh, red flow uh, pathway to flow your blood to the electrode these are uh, three or four electrodes this is electrical contact to your uh, digital readout. That's fine. We don't have to care about it right now. So for the electrode, you have reference electrode here, the silver, silver chloride reference electrode. And then since the current is uh, 
small. Sometimes you put counter electrode, but here in this uh, design, you don't need the counter electrode. You don't need to have, you don't need the counter electrode because your IR drop is smaller, something like that. So you don't need the counter electrode here. But now you need two working electrodes because you can imagine that not only hydrogen peroxide can be oxidized, there's a lot of compounds in your blood that can be oxidized. So how to correct that? So you need two working electrodes. First, you need the first working electrode that have the glucose oxidase. Your first working electrode has the glucose oxidase. So you can get the current from hydrogen peroxide from glucose and the current from something else. That's the first working electrode. The second working electrode, you don't have glucose oxidase. And once you apply the potential, so you're not, you're not gonna get the current from glucose, hydrogen peroxide, but you will get the current from something else. And we assume that the something else is the same, is the same throughout the working and second electrode. So you can subtract the current between the first working electrode and second working electrode. So you get the current from only hydrogen peroxide glucose. So this is why uh, you need two working electrodes. 